we are recording this live um, on YouTube. YouTube's actually broadcasting it live, so you guys get to watch it here just on Zoom. And then uh, we'll also be recording this, so anybody who missed the session or wants to go back and rewatch it later, uh, you are able to do that. Let me go ahead and do that as well. Record to this computer. All right. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming. Um, we have a great, looks like we have a great audience this morning. Um, I, I hope everybody is enjoying this, uh, these virtual meetings and we're, ha we're actually giving us a good reason to meet more frequently, which is awesome. Um, so uh, today we have some great sessions uh, available for you today. Um, I am gonna talk about some iOS stuff and um, we're gonna move it on to Bob, who's gonna talk about the files app. And we have um, uh, the Discord discourse uh, community is going to be discussed as well as George Brooks going to join us a little later to give us some tips as well. So, so we just, we did have a question here that everybody was asking, did I have, do I have a um, uh, magic trackpad? Yes, I do. Um, and I, I've only had it for less than 24 hours. So I, I don't think it's a fair assessment to say what it's all about. This is it here. Um, very, very nice keyboard. I'm very impressed with it uh, so far. But uh, I'm going to give a full review on my podcast, uh, In Touch with iOS, um, on Thursday. But I will also be doing it on the iPhone SIG, which is going to be coming up in May uh, as well. So you get to hear even more about it. The program note for I In Touch with iOS. I do have Renee Ritchie coming on to the show if everything goes well. Uh, and I think he's going to be there. And uh, I'm looking forward to that. So you'll get to hear some really good uh, conversation about iOS. So let's just go ahead and uh, move right into... Um, the, uh, the presentation here. I've got some slides here I wanted to go through real quick and uh, talk a little bit about the, the iPhone SE. Uh, as you know, the iPhone SE just, just came out on um, uh, this weekend. It actually came out. And uh, I'm going to bring up the slides here. So this is the, this is the iPhone SE. And my mouse here. It is. Uh, it comes in four color. It comes in three colors: black, white, and red. And of course, uh, they've got some really good design here. I don't know why I can't get this off my screen. One second here, folks. Sorry. Let's try this again. There we go. So um, the the iPhone SE is uh, is is probably one of the most interesting uh, phones that the iPhones that Apple's ever come out with. It does have a four point seven inch Retina HD display. Uh, it's a true tone display, uh, which is which is great, and uh, of course it's got the touch ID. It's got the touch ID and not the face ID, which was kind of surprising. But it gives uh, it gives um, you options with uh, uh, using that as opposed to face ID because some people don't like face ID. Here are the colors that that it has available, which is black, white, and product red. Um, they did. They did test this phone that does work on up to one meters of, of water, so you can inadvertently drop the phone in water if you happen to do that. But I wouldn't recommend that. Um, but it, it it is uh, it is pretty cool that you can do that. Um, here are all the other uh, features on it. A lot, there's a lot of stuff, a lot of marketing stuff. So I'm not going to go through everything here. But um, real durable phone, real good quality. Um, performance wise, they've got the same exact chip in here, the A13 Bionic that. Uh, uh, that is included in the iPhone 11 and the 11 Pro. Uh, so that itself is really what makes uh, this revolutionary when it comes to a phone that's of this lowest price point. Um, and here's the differences between the SE and the uh, second generation and the SE, which was an A9 chip. I know there's a few of you out here that, that are, who love that new, the old SE, which was a four inch screen, which was based on the iPhone 5. It's a, it's a, it's a great little phone. Um, but I guess Apple just decided, you know, they, they wanted to make a, a, a SE second generation based on um, the iPhone 8. Uh, so, because that's that that was kind of a sweet spot with the screen. So that's, I think, really what the, a lot of the, the differences were. But here's the differences between the SE and the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 7. iPhone 8 had the, the A11 Bionic, uh, which is a couple generations back. But it basically, in essence, has the same guts as the 8, the SE does, uh, with a few exceptions with the chip and the camera and all that. I'll go over that in just a moment. Um, GPU performance, it's much faster. You can see all this. You get you get the picture. We don't have to go through all this. Um, the camera, this has a, a 12 megapixel wide camera, uh, much better than the uh, the eight and the, the, the previous SE. 
six element lens, optical image stabilization, all, all the all the all the bells and whistles, and it, and it really works well with the Bionic chip, which has uh, got the image signal, signal processor and a neutral engine that makes things uh, work real well. And show some photos of what it can do. It does have portrait mode in the camera, but it does not have night mode, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute here. Uh, but the, the portrait mode is limited. It only has about three or four functions, so it's not going to have it's a lot of the things that the, the, the Pro has, um, but gives you all the, uh, the all the great ways of taking pictures that we, we all know and love what the iPhone can do. Um, here's some more action here. Uh, so here's all the, the, all, all the uh, features in the iPhone's uh, uh, SE's camera. You can do 4K video, which is amazing, slow motion video, quick take videos. Uh, it does do scary recording. So you're getting a lot of the stuff that's in, included with the, uh, with, with the camera. Uh, that was that's in the 11 11 pro so a lot of the stuff that it has you don't have to spend all this extra money on it so um, front pat camera is a seven megapixel camera um, here here's some of those as well I'll have to go through all this stuff now let's move on to some technology wireless the wireless is a gigabit class LTE and it also is it is ready for Wi-Fi 6 what if anybody doesn't know what Wi-Fi 6 is this is this is the next generation of, of Wi-Fi Every of us know us, we, all, we have our Wi-Fi is Wi-Fi 2.4 gigahertz and Wi-Fi 5 gigahertz. Well, this is six. This is the next technology that's going to be coming out. So it's ready uh, for the future, which is great. Uh, this does have Bluetooth 5.0, which is the latest technology for Bluetooth, as well as uh, it does have the dual SIM, which is great, being able to allow you to have a SIM card in, in, in the phone as well as being able to use an eSIM. So you could uh, do um, uh, dual SIMs if you're traveling. Of course, we aren't doing much traveling as of late. So uh, battery life, it, um, it's getting up to 13 hours of video playback, which is pretty fair if, if considering. Um, and um, here's all the features that the, the, the iPhone SE has. Uh, touch ID, water resistant, all new colors, and uh, it's got the wide camera. It's got the HDR, so a lot, a lot of great things that are that are included in this uh, in, in this iPhone SE. Here's all the pricing that comes across now, so you can't beat this. Three ninety nine is the base price that starts uh, with the iPhone SE, and here's the pricing for the other models as we already know about. Um, it, you can go fifty dollars more and go from the, the one twenty eight. Let me see if that shows that in here. Um, no, it doesn't show that. Let me go back to here. And um, you can go to uh, $50 more and you get the, um, you, you can get 200, you get 128 gigabytes space, which I think is well worth it. Or you can go up to uh, 256, which brings it up to $100 more. Um, uh, so we'll look at that pricing in just a second on, the, on their Apple's website. And of course, here's a line of all the items. So here's some of the things, here's some some of the takeaways I wanted to talk about real quick as far as what the iPhone isn't including based on the iPhone 11 and the SE that is. So the first number five would be the stereo speakers. It, it does not have stereo speakers. So it's only, it only has a single mono speaker in it. So sound is not going to be the greatest. So you, that's going to be kind of a downfall if, if you're not a big, um, if you're not big into, uh, if you like listening to music on your iPhone uh, without earphones, you, uh, that might be kind of a game changer for you. Uh, number four is no night mode. So yeah, well, they had a cut somewhere. So they, they didn't include night mode in, in, in the iPhone SE. The iPhone 11 and 11 Pro has that. I can attest to you if you're, if you're going to be a big photographer and you want to really take a lot of photos and want to be able to have this capability, this is going to be kind of a game changer too, as far as, uh, as, far as that goes. Uh, number three would be no face ID and there's no headphone jack. Well, we lived without the headphone jack anyway. The iPhone 8 didn't have a headphone jack. So uh, so I don't think that's of a huge deal because at this point, most people are using Bluetooth uh, headphones at this point. Uh, touch ID, I don't think, is, is, I think people do like to have touch ID in the fact that uh, they uh, like that versus face ID, but Face ID is on most of the rest of the models. Uh, so it was interesting to see that Apple decided to stick with Touch ID in it, but it is a personal preference. Now there is no tap to wake. I really like that feature. And the, the fact that you're being able just to double tap twice on your iPhone to, to bring it up to wake, it, that's not included. They're kind of annoying. I, th I thought that type of feature they could have included. And then uh, the last uh, piece was uh, uh, the U1 Ultra Wideband chip. It is in the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro, but um, uh, which, which the AirPods take advantage of. And it, there really isn't much else that's taking advantage of the U1 chip right now, uh, but 
uh, you would think potentially Apple could have future proofed it a little bit if it was included, but uh, they didn't. But uh, again, that that that's that's the case. That's not a big deal. Um, I don't know if Bob, but we had any questions while I was going through that. Uh, just one, one, a note from Ray um, uh, about he got an email from uh, Sam's Club, uh, some sort of an e-gift card uh, when you purchase one for a uh, hundred dollars from buying if you buy it at Sam's Club. So that's interesting. Nice. <laughs> if you're a Sam's wow. Club member, <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's a that's a great thing to know about here. Um, all right, let me. Uh, I'm going to share my screen again and. Uh... Sure, my and somebody's asking where is it made, and I don't I, I I don't know why what the you know at virtually all of Apple's hardware is built in mainland China, right? Um, are you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. All right, let's uh let me go to Apple's website. We're going to look at pricing and kind of kind of go over that real quick. And I think I'm good on time. Uh, let's go to the iPhone and we'll go to the SE here gonna buy it and give you some pricing. Uh, all right. I like the comparison better. I like that they do that. Compare, here we go. So we'll just leave this th these the, the eleven. Uh well we can comp actually let's compare it with the eight because that's what it replaced. Um so it start like I said, it starts at three ninety nine, and we went through all the features already. What you have, and and you really don't see much difference if you if you look at it between the eight and the and the SE as far as features goes. Um, here are the space. Here's all the space uh, choices here for the uh, SE. So if I were if I were buying this phone and if I had an extra fifty bucks, I would go with the one twenty eight. That's a good sweet spot. That's pretty awesome that Apple's not really charging a ton of money uh, d difference in the space because usually they do. Um, so I would take advantage of that um, and, and get that model. Um, and then here's all the other stuff that's in here as far as what it's in, what it includes and what we just talked about. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, that's the iPhone uh, SE. And my 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 final uh, opinions of this phone is I think this phone is is aimed towards someone who just wants a very basic phone, who's upgrading from like let's say the uh, this if you have the uh, of course you go with the, if you have the five for sure if you have the six six s uh seven um and and eight um i would it would it'd be a very compelling upgrade obviously if anybody has like the 10r or if they have the uh the 10 uh they have the 10s 10s max or any of the newer models there's no compelling reason to upgrade to this because the, it that phone has a lot of upgrades now apple does still sell the the 10r and uh i find it interesting uh if we compare them here the 10R gives you a lot more uh, color choices, of course, if you're into the colors of your phone. Um, but uh, it, it's the $200 increase in price. But if you see here, you do have you know quite a difference as far as the display goes. And it also has Face ID versus Touch ID. The processor on the 10R is, is an A12, so it's just a one generation back processor. So if you're really into having a phone that's gonna have a little more true depth for, for photography and Having some higher end type of things that come uh, that come with the 10R, then 10R might be more of a compelling model to take a look at. 10R is going to be around for a while, so. Uh, but uh, again, uh, I think this SE is an amazing phone for 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 entry level. Um, I was very impressed the fact that Apple decided to come up with this uh, this model because uh, uh, it's not it's, it hasn't been usual to, uh, Apple to do that. I mean, they, when everybody saw the 11 and the 11 Pro come out, you know that. that you got to open up your wallet pretty wide to, 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 to purchase that phone. So uh, it's going to really give uh, you an opportunity for um, uh, getting into the phone, for getting an iPhone if you for the first time or if you're ready to upgrade. Um, all right, with that, do we have any questions? We're going to open up. Just, for, just uh, a, a note uh, 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 from Chad. Uh, apparently, you cannot uh, do the uh, iPhone upgrade program with the SE. That's correct. Yes, I forgot to mention that. Yes, um, you cannot be part of the iPhone upgrade program. For those of you who are not familiar with the iPhone upgrade program, uh, what that is, is I'm on it every year, I get my iPhone and I'm able to after a year, it's my choice, I can go ahead and um, do an upgrade to the phone uh, each year and just trade it in. 
Well, because of the low price of this iPhone SE, I'm pretty sure Apple decided, you know, that we're not we're not going to be partic participating that with that. Um, you can get the uh, you can get the payment plan program with the, your Apple Card, and it's no interest um, for that. So you do have that option. Other thing I was going to mention too is the Apple Care that's available on the Apple Care Plus available on the SE is only uh, seventy nine dollars, which is the cheapest of, of all the iPhones that are out there as far as um, as far as the service coverage goes. So you get that uh, you get that nice uh, bonus as well too. So do we want to open up for any other questions? Any if anybody wants to ask questions uh, with really into iOS or iPhone, uh, the kind of an open Q and A like we have, um, please uh, raise your hand. You want, do you want if you want to have uh, if you want to speak we can we can open that up too if you want uh, there's a, a question in the q a dave you might want to look at okay if you can see it from nancy oh nancy hello nancy um uh you 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 are asking two questions i'm gonna read this out to everybody so, so everybody can hear it um uh video golf swings how will the new extra wide camera help with my with my video so the ultra wide, if you're talking about the iPhone, the iPad Pro, the newest iPad Pro, the 2020 model with the wider angle uh, lens, um, it's going to help you a lot. I mean, it's going to help give you some some more um, uh, wider angle shots. Uh, it only has two lenses on the iPad Pro versus the iPhone 11 Pro, which has three. Uh, so um, uh, I can I can see uh, I can see that you could definitely uh, take advantage of what the wide what wide angle it has on the iPad. Um, as for, and then she also asks, uh, how far away I'm, I, I, should I be for a, a six foot tall person? Uh, I don't know that I can't give you exact distance. Um, what would you think, Bob? Maybe I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I've never actually tried that. So if it's the Me same, <laughs> it's the same viewing angle. And then I would be concerned about, uh, it would be more than the six foot tall person. If you're looking at the whole golf swing, cause you're not gonna, you're gonna, if you're that's, that's, uh, uh, you know, you have to be further away so you can see the whole swing, right? Because you want to see their arms right. as they go up and all that. So uh, I, without looking at the viewing angle and then where the camera, where the iPad is located. So if you have the iPad on a stand, okay, you know, held up at, say, three feet off the ground or four feet off the ground, then you could probably mm. get closer. But, uh, you know, without actually having it and, and, and testing that. And then, of course, it depends on the height of the person. So anyway. So yeah. interesting yeah. problem uh, requires a real world test to go to, <laughs> go to the closed yeah. Apple store. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, yeah. it, I mean, yeah, you could simulate it with an iPhone and look at it probably, but. Um, um, I got a few minutes left. Let me, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the magic keyboard uh, while we got an extra few minutes here. Um, this is, uh, let, me, let me share my screen again here. Uh, go back here and share my screen. I have a couple of other questions when you have them. All oh, okay. Let's do, let's, let's go ahead and answer those. Go ahead. Uh, what version, uh, how do you find out what version of Bluetooth, uh, did the, your device supports in iOS 13? Oh gosh. I don't know that the operating system tells you that. I think you might have to look at the hardware it's specs. Yeah, you'll have to look at the actual specs. I don't think you actually can look it up and say, "Hey, which which is ports?" Yeah. The last few models, have, I believe, were Bluetooth four, was it not? Yeah. Um, well, I, Bluetooth I, five now. I, I don't. I don't know what models have what version of Bluetooth. I think you just have to physically yeah. look at the specs on the Apple web page. Yeah. Um, all right. So just just real quick, this is the Magic Keyboard. Um, it's a it's it's a absolutely beautiful device. I'm I'm very impressed the fact uh, that they um, they created this uh, compared to the Folio. I didn't like the keyboard. This keyboard is just like a keyboard on a Mac MacBook Pro. I, I was just thoroughly impressed with that. The touchpad works wonderfully. A couple caveats I, I did find you got to be careful not hitting under the uh, under the keyboard because um, you can't. It, it's prone to come off very easy. You got to make sure you're grabbing it from the right side and holding the back of it because I found that a couple times already that the iPad fell off of the keyboard. So you got to be real careful, real careful with that. So, um, but uh, I'll give you a f more review of it uh, during the iPhone SIG, which is coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. It's, it's on our calendar. It's the same second Tuesday. I'll be doing a virtual meeting for the iPhone SIG, which I'm looking forward to that. We'll be sending out more information in the middle of that. And we continue on with virtual meetings. We're going to, we're going to continue to do, um, uh, virtual meetings uh, we're trying to do every other week so we can uh, uh, 
keep in contact with everybody here, which is which, which I'm excited about. And uh, uh, we, we, we really we appreciate you being members. And I, and I hope you enjoyed this uh, presentation today and, uh, and about the iPhone SE. And, and hopefully it'll help you make a decision if you're going to, if you're looking for a new phone. Uh, there was a question yeah, over in the, in the there was a question over in the chat about this uh, mail hack this that that this uh, researcher announced. Right. As far as I know, and most of us know, it, it has not occurred in the wild. Uh, we don't, you know, Apple Apple is downplaying it um, to a certain extent, which is kind of unusual to a certain extent that they would downplay it a little bit. But um, I honestly do not know. Uh, if it's a real if it's a real problem in the wild or not, I don't think it is. Uh, I would say, I would say it would be. I would not worry about this at this point. Um, yeah. Here, the, that's the tidbits article is pretty good. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, the, the, this is uh, this is a this is a good uh, article. This is on tidbits.com. Our friend Adam Angst, uh, who just celebrated thirty years of doing this, uh, uh, which I can't believe. Uh, and um, he, Glenn Fleischman's a real uh, uh, good author. They have a good uh, author. They have writing articles. And yeah, check this out. He pretty much is saying this isn't going to affect uh, normal users. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it. What else we got? Uh, we got somebody was asking. We got about 40 people today. That was someone was asking yes, down do. in the chat. Thank you, everyone, Including for coming. Us. Yeah, 40. People, well, are we a participant too? I don't know. It says 40 and two, 40 it's, plus two, Dave. Says, so, so 42. That is true. 40 it says 30 pl plus two. 38 okay. plus two. Okay. So. All right. 38 plus two. That's right. Okay. So, anyway, I'm glad everybody was able to come. It's, uh, it's yeah, almost, almost as many as come to a, a uh, in person event. Uh, yeah. Handshake, high five. Um, high five. Thank uh, you. Uh, well, thank, well, thanks, everybody. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, remote lunch. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we can be doing that. So thanks everybody. I hope, hope you enjoyed that uh, uh, presentation. And um, if you have any other questions to the rest of the, the sessions, just put them in the chat here and I'm just going to hand it over to Bob and he's going to talk about the, the files app, uh, continue on his discussion from last, uh, last session. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds good, Dave. Um, the uh, I think there's one other thing on the SE, uh, and we talked about it a little yeah. bit a little bit ahead. So, what color would you get, Dave? <laughs> I might get the red. <laughs> yeah, and and there's two reasons this, to this get the red. Hour. Yeah, there's two reasons to get the red that I think. Number one, it's red with a black front, so you don't have to hack two iPhones together to get a black right. front on it. Okay, yeah. I just think that's a gorgeous look. And number two is. Uh, they're actually don't if you buy the product red it used to be that uh and i don't know about the other devices but specifically for that iphone uh they donated to uh aids foundation now they're devoting to, uh, do, donating to uh covid19 so COVID -19, yeah. you know it it doesn't cost you anymore it's a great look if you don't like the color put a case on it um you know i, I mean anyway it's just it's just an interesting uh, uh an interesting little side note to what I think is a very nice piece of technology. I don't think I'm going to give up my 11 pro max for it, but uh, no. it's it, for yeah. my wife, when she, when she's ready to go off the SE, the old SE, this is a good, good device. So files, we're going to talk yes. about files, files, files app so, in iOS. It, oh, wait a minute. There's the files app on Mac OS. I thought we were doing files app on, never mind. <laughs> All right. I'm so just making sure everybody knows we're talking about iOS. Uh, I, files app on iOS. Um, Okay, tech specs page. Somebody put a uh, Margaret put a note. Tech specs page is well, on Apple's website. It's in the uh, oh, excellent. In the chat. So thank you, Margaret. Hey, hey, Margaret, throw that throw that on a community. I put the road mic uh, on the uh, the uh, mic stand on the community. Margaret, throw that on the community for us. That'd be really great. So yeah. everybody can awesome. everybody can find that. Um, all righty. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, we talked a little bit about the files app. And I kind of went over, kind of did a once over lightly uh, on the features. Uh, and we really didn't have, we weren't really set up that time or prepared to get Q, some Q&A. So uh, everybody, please, if you um, if you have any questions, please ask. Uh, I'm going to go back just a little bit and go over a couple of things. But uh, what I'm going to do is to share the iPad screen here. And uh, Dave, will, Dave will catch the q and I got to move this over so I can see everything. So 
uh, there's this is my iPad. Um, so one of the things that we're going to talk a little bit more about at some other point is this 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 and and Dave will talk about it on his iOS uh, when he talks about iOS more later. Um, is, uh, so I have uh, my Magic Trackpad hooked up to uh, my iPad here, and I use this a lot. Um, and uh, it really is an amazing uh, tool to have for uh, for the iPad. It really helps out a lot. So th down here is our files app, and we'll open it back up again. And th the one thing that a whole bunch of people always ask about that where's th there's something missing here. I don't see this. And if you drag down, let me get it to see all. Okay, let me go back to recents. And why can't I get it to do it? Browse. So uh, there we go. I was in the wrong screen. One of the things that uh, is really nice, it, you that you, and you don't see it unless you drag down. There we are there. That you can sort this list if it's got tags, if it's by kind. So you can sort just pretty much like the finder. Okay, um, uh, by size, by date, by name. You also have folder view, list view, and column view. Okay, so I can uh, I can go down into here. There's something that doesn't there. Yeah, going to my dock into the readle, and and you can see the see column view column view there, which gives you a lot of the same basic functionality of of the finder on the mac to a certain extent the other one the other thing that we talked about just a little bit is locations and i think this is a little bit a little bit more important than some people make it out to be so notice my first location is icloud drive so i synchronize uh all of my devices to icloud drive i have uh i have family sharing uh of icloud drive we have uh, uh, two terabytes for the family that's uh about ten dollars a month um that's expensive to a certain extent, but it gives everybody uh, all the data they need at this point. Uh, we can look at the actual storage we're using. So all of my photos, all of my data, uh, my son, my wife, all that shared amongst their uh, devices. So if you don't have as much data, uh, you may not need that, that big of one you can go down. The second place is I call this the Danger Will Robinson place. This is on my iPad. Okay. And let's see, let's see about my, uh, on my iPad, uh, what, what I've got what I've got uh, that could be a problem. So uh, the Firefox web browser uh, downloads is, is uh, has a, some things stored there. LumaFusion has uh, some data stored there, scares me to death. Moodle is a, is a cloud uh, neutron. OmniFocus has some backups stored there. And uh, I forgot what survey is, doesn't matter. Anyway, this data uh, is at risk if the iPad is not properly backed up, okay? So I wanna make sure that your iPad's getting backed up because this data is only stored on your iPad, not like an iCloud drive, it's only stored on your iPad. So it's a nice temporary storage place to a certain extent. Uh, it's also a place where I think you can get lost. So just watch that a little bit, uh, what you're doing. Um, Dropbox is, uh, I have to, uh, Oh, so let's just do that. So I I do not use Dropbox hardly at all anymore. Um, so what I have to do is I have to open up the Dropbox app. Open up the Dropbox app. Okay, and I do not really want Dropbox to do anything with my photos. They, they're trying to be, to me, Dropbox is trying to be more than a file storage. They're trying to turn themselves into something more. Um, anyway, um, so here's the public folder. Here's the picture folder. Here's a folder that I share between myself and my wife. Um, and, you know, it, it's just, you know, pretty basic stuff. Uh, we've pretty much moved away from that. Uh, but it, it's still there. It still works. If you're using Dropbox, this is good. You can do this with other uh, 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 shared uh, file things such as um, uh, OneDrive, Microsoft OneDrive. I think Google Drive also. I don't think I've tested that recently, but Google Drive. 
Uh, you can put favorites. You, I'm sorry. It does work. It does work. Does work. Okay, good. Um, let's see. There's something. Okay, oh, never mind. It wasn't a question. So download folders is a favorite. Um, and and this is so here's a shared one. This might be a little unusual. Um, and I can't actually demonstrate that because this IP address has changed. So this is what's called uh, 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 SMB file sharing. Um, this is a server. Uh, it's called a network attached storage on my network. Uh, this server is not at that IP address anymore. Uh, that has to do with a network rebuild. Uh, and so that, that, that is a, a, just a shared folder shared uh, disk drive on my network in my house. Um, I would have to change the IP address fairly. It's a little bit unusual maybe for some people to have that. Um, and then you can go by tags. So if, if, it's, if you have something that's red, there, let's see. Let's see what I can find. Red, no reds. Oh, there's an orange, one orange. I won't open that up. There's a bunch of yellows. There's a bunch of shit. I don't know. I, there's a whole, I knew there was a bunch of greens. So those are, those are tags uh, uh, that you can share amongst all your different devices. So I kind of, I kind of like, I kind of like that. Um, it's, it's handy uh, if people are use, into using tags. So that's a quick kind of overview. Now, Apple has this penchant. Uh, I don't know about you guys. Apple has this penchant, and they do this on Mac OS, this thing, and this recent, um, this recents, and I don't find this of a lot of value. Some other people do, but it, it's there, okay? Um, and it shows you the, uh, it shows you the, you know, recent uh, uh, documents uh, and 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 so forth that you you've seen, that you've used. I'm not, I'm just not. I don't use it that often. I don't know why, but they, Apple really thinks it's important. Uh, I search. That's what I do. I, uh, I, I, if I want a document, I search 99.9%. .9 it works for me. So I, I use search a lot and you can do voice search. You can go in and, and uh, use, uh, Oh, that nice lady in the can. I don't want to say her name out loud because she might do something and turn <laughs> off my lights or, or, or hey, you, Hey you, hey you, little 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 black fuzzy thing sitting on my desk. Play some music. Um, anyway, uh, so that that's that's kind of a, a a quick overview of some of the of of this the high end of this. Now, it gets it gets really interesting when you start playing a little bit deeper. So let's go on my desktop, and I think. So um, this is a very interesting article. It's timely. Uh, it's if you dig around, you get it for for free. There's this nice lady. Uh, her her name is Mary Meeker, um, and I forgot who she works for. It doesn't doesn't really matter. She writes. She does this thing every year about uh, internet trends and stuff. The uh, Mary Meeker report. She just did a report. Her team did a report, um, which talks about what's going on in the world um, uh, with COVID-19. Uh, I suggest you go grab a copy of this. It's a 30 page document full of text and charts. Um, I suggest you read this. Uh, I'm not gonna go any further than that. But, so, but what I did here is rather interesting. So I opened up a PDF inside of the files app. You, ha you have a full, full PDF view capability, all, all inside of this document, nice rich view, all, all right there in inside of the files app. Okay, uh, you can you can go through. So let's see, let's go somewhere else. Probably don't want to put up my taxes. Um, you don't want to see that anyway. Uh, let's go over here. Said David Sparks. Uh, so that that I'm just looking for some some other file types to do because it's uh, there's too much going on. Let me let me go over here and find something so we don't need FileMaker. Um, let's see, is there any other fancy files in here? No, nope, you can't open that. Anyway, oh, here, let's look in our download, look in the download. So here's the downloads folder, okay. Um, there's more PDFs in there. I was just looking for a, uh, I was looking for like a Word document or something like that. Um, oh, let's see, what's this one? Oh, okay, this one's, I think I can open this one up fine. Uh, and <laughs> it's good. Safe. 
it, yeah. And boom, it opens it up right in Word. And this is a, a white paper on audiophile AC power cords. Okay. And that's a subject for a different meeting. Uh, so, but so that's, a, so that's light reading. That's light reading. Actually, it's, a, it's, 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 uh, it's uh, electrifying. Um, anyway, so, and then back to the files app. So it, it gives you kind of the files app. It can, can end up being your hub. So, and, and one of the things that iOS has done, iOS is backwards. Okay. Uh, from the way a lot of people work on, on, on computers, on Macs. So, the way some people work on Macs and definitely on Windows, they go look for the file that they want to operate on. So they're writing a report in Microsoft Word for the boss, and they go look for that specific report that they did. Okay, iOS just turns that completely upside down. What do you want to do? I want to edit a text document. I open pages, okay? And right in pages is my recent documents. So you see how that just turns it completely inside out. It's it's uh, not about the thing you are working, uh, not about a thing on your computer that you, you don't care about that. It's what you're doing. So iOS is more about what you're doing, not about, uh, not about that specific entity. And to me, that's... I like that way of thinking and that way of working. It streamlines stuff and it takes away um, this, this searching for things because you know that you write all your word processing documents in Microsoft Word. You can do that on the iPad. You know that you do all your spreadsheets in numbers. You can do that on the iPad. Okay, or on your iOS device to assert any iOS device. So that's to me is the thing um, that, if if you that's the thing that's the thing that that changes this paradigm and what files does the files dot kind of lets you go back to the other old paradigm desktop metaphor paradigm there's a i see a question in the in the in the chat there um so i let me go let me go read that how much if how, is there a way to find out how much space the files in the app would take up if you download every file to the ipad uh that well, there's a there's a way of doing that uh, that you would and and I can show you that and you're I, I'm assuming you're speaking uh, Frank uh, specifically about iCloud maybe uh, maybe uh, you want to bring him on and let him talk Dave Frank Salatini yeah, yeah let's do that sure. let's let's <clears throat> how to talk all right Frank you're unmuted okay. Um... Am I, am I am I up? I don't. You're know. up. We're here. Oh, Hi. Yes, you're up. We, yeah, we, we, we I, hear I you. I know. I mean, frequently I'm not in a in a position to be online with my iPad, mm -hmm. and there are files that you know those cloud with the arrow files are useless. Uh, yeah. The, so what what Frank is talking about here, and we're gonna we're gonna go through it slowly because I. So this little this file here needs to be downloaded to be used. Okay. Right. So, right. And so you, if you need that specific file, uh, that's a problem, right? Because you're not connected right. to the internet. All right. So your question is, how do I know, how do I know if I, if I download all my files, how much space they take? And that's a little fuzzy, but I think I can actually show it to you. Okay. So we'll go into settings and we'll go into my account and we'll go into iCloud and we'll go into manage storage. And I think. Oh, yeah. All right. So let's say that everything in pages, you need everything in pages. You could download that. So I have 582 megabytes of pages documents. I have 487 megabytes of keynote documents uh, and, and so forth. So that's how you how you can go look. Twenty eight megabytes, twenty nine megabytes of numbers. Okay, so that'll tell you how much each one is taking. Um, the I'm I do not know, and maybe Dave does, if you can prevent iOS from offloading those things. 
uh, uh, like it does. Uh, I don't know if I can actually prevent it from doing that. So let me just so Apple. Yeah, right, they exactly. Apple. It's it's part of this whole managed storage thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Okay. I'm wondering why files isn't in the managed storage categories. Because files doesn't store anything. Yeah. It's files not, just it's use it. Okay. See, oh. it, it's oh, not oh, stored in files. It's stored in iCloud. So let me let me let me bring this back up again. So. All, let me go bring up the files. So all of that stuff I was looking at is stored in iCloud Drive. All of this is an iCloud Drive. It's not in the files app. It's in iCloud Drive. Ah. Okay. So while it's in iCloud Drive, isn't there a way to find out the amount that it takes up? Yeah. And that's what I just, that's what I was just doing. So if we go back over, if you have to go, go back to over settings. to settings. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. And so let's, let's go back into uh, manage storage. And you can do this on your, um, on your uh, Mac too. Sure. And let's just go back into pages. Come on. This is all the pages documents. Ah, okay. Each, in, each individual pages document right. is there. Perfect. Okay. Perfect. Now, if you have a document that is absolutely critical, what you can do is you can take that document, okay, and um, let's uh, let's take uh, I'll take something that doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm looking for something that I can I can that's not gigantic and I can move and I don't care about. Uh, Let's see. Let's just go to desktop. No, I don't want to do that. Documents. Uh, I'm looking for something that just is. Because I have things. I have things kind of where I want them, and I I want to. Sure. sure. Uh, let's see. Let's look at ham radio. Let's say I need this file, mm -hmm. and I want to put it on my iPad. That won't let me do that. Oh, it's not downloaded. So let's download it. Now, this is nothing that anything can open up, and I should be able to, oops, I dropped it. I put it in the wrong place. I put it in Dropbox. I want to put it on my iPad. Now, that document is on both. Is both places, because Dropbox, uh, and, and it's a document I don't need anymore, so it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to go put it back to iCloud Drive, okay? But the point is, is that that uh, I've just put it on my iPad, and now that will stay on my iPad. So if I have a, a critical document that I need somewhere, and I don't want, iCloud, I don't want App, I, Apple's iCloud Drive to uh, take it off, there you go. It's right there. All right. Okay? I'm satisfied. Uh, well, sad as a, I, I'm not satisfied, but I, I agree with you because because it's a pro, to a certain extent it's a problem. So just to, I just want to I'm going to do something here. I'm going to change my sharing, okay? And uh, I'm going to share and let me do this. Uh, share my desktop, okay? So I'm over here on my Mac, and I'm assuming you can see my desktop. Mm -hmm. All right. And I'm going to go to iCloud Drive. And you will notice that there's some stuff that's, you know, may or may not be completely synchronized here uh, on, on my Mac even. All right. right. I'm, not too, I'm not too worried about that. Okay. But uh, so, for instance, that PDF, whatever that is, this is a bunch of scan. This is, this is Bob's scanning project. Uh, so uh, I, I am scanning virtually all of uh, all of these documents and so forth. So, you know, those are all downloaded. So there are some documents on this Mac that should not be that should be uh, visible and, are, and apparently are not pulled down. And that sort of annoys me because they should all be all be pulled down. But look at all these. See, they're not pulled down. OK, so, you know, that one should be pulled down. That one should be pulled down. All right. And you can see each one coming down. So this may be a fact, uh, a fact that um, this Mac is running a beta, which is kind of a bad thing. But anyway, we'll go from there. So that, that <laughs> does that does that sort of answer what you were asking for, Frank? 
Yeah, yeah, but I've had the problem with the Mac too that you tech that you're just talking about now. And all I have uh, the solution is a 10 terabyte external hard drive with organization like the Mac uh, hard drive itself, and then I just put files there, and it doesn't go to the cloud ever. Well, I I am I I consider it a I'm going to put it an in quotes backup end quote okay of of what we're doing here so let's go back to i got a question for you uh, uh bob yeah uh, ron Her ron herman was asking can't you view the storage items by going to icloud on the web probably which i just did i you signed into your icloud drive you can yeah get yeah you could you could do you could do it from there um yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can do it from there. I haven't, I haven't, I've never thought about doing it there because I can do it right on the iPad. I can see it right on the iPad. So, uh, and, and I guess that that, uh, yeah, that's another place to go. Yep. You can go there too. Just yeah. go to, uh, and then you go to iCloud.com and just sign into your iCloud account. They've added a lot more robust features on the web. Now I've talked about that before. Sharing is pause. Bring your shared window to the front. Stop Where's sharing. Your iPad? Well, I, well, I was trying to do that. Share screen. Got about boom, boom. Share. How much time do I have? Probably not another ten minutes. Five or ten minutes. Five or ten minutes. Okay. Okay. Face is too far away. All right. No, it isn't. I just had this this thing in front of me. I have a mask. It's called a pop filter. Um, it doesn't stop COVID, but it stops pops. So, um, anyway. So let's see. Here's another one that's kind of interesting recently deleted okay and these can come from a whole bunch of different places and i don't know if it's just i don't know where all they come from but anyway so if you've recently deleted something it should should be there um anyway so that's that's a little bit about storage locations let's go down to browse uh here so let's let's go in this little so everybody likes either three lines a hamburger menu or what do you call the triple dots is there a is there a, a fancy acronym for the triple dots i don't know that there is so uh, i don't know but this is an this is an interesting little um which is going to be hard to demonstrate but i'm going to try and do it anyway so in the files app one of the things you can do which is really pretty cool is you can scan documents so let's see if I can do this, make, make this work in this in, in my dimmed light here. So I'm going to scan a document, and I'm not going to scan an empty coffee cup. So you're uh, coffee. And this guy is no longer in business for this thing, but let's scan anyway. So, all right, and I can do the same thing that I do with any other document. I can drag to the corners. Okay. I just find this. That I, at Yahoo. No, no, no dot com. Huh? <laughs> yeah, well, never mind. He he by the way, he's a really good guy, but he's got a full time job and he doesn't do it. And notice it's all crooked and I can keep the scan. Okay. And there we go ready for a next scan. So if you need to scan a document, the files app is a nice way. You can do it in notes. Um, you can do all kinds of things. So anyway, you're done. Uh, and we can go here to cancel. So uh, I thought that was, I thought that was kind of an interesting, uh, an interesting addition that was done a while ago. It also has um, connect to server and it has edit. Okay. And what edit does is you can say, I don't want Dropbox anymore or what I want. I really want on my iPad at the top. No, I want it. I want it down here. So you can reorder, you can reorder things around. I want uh, the shared to be, you know, so I can change the order of these things. Uh, I want my orange ones to be first. I want my red ones to be first, however you want. So it, it's just like any other, you know, sorting um, of, of the side side menu. So that's, it, it's just sort of this hidden, I, I don't know, it's just sort of hidden. And, and I, I don't have a good way of, of you know, helping unhide stuff. 
uh, again, you have you have select like you do with a whole bunch of things. So if you have a bunch of files you want to select, so I want to say the Adobe folder and the Archem folder, there's things I can do. Um, I don't even, I don't know what recover does and I'm not going to click it or I can delete it. I'm not going to delete these folders. So just show that you can do that. You can um, uh, do that. So if I actually delete these, okay. Um, and it says recently deleted items may be permanently deleted. Okay. By your storage. So you probably don't want to do that. This is, that's the recover. Now, if I go over to, let me just, uh, let me just say done. So I don't do anything. Let's go over to iCloud okay. drive. And, and let's go over to select, okay? And so what I can do is I have this folder and this folder and um, I can delete it. Um, I can compress it, I can copy it. So compress it is zipping it, okay? Uh, I can go down and I can pick um, a file. Let's find a file. Let's say that I wanna take that file. Um, why am I not? I'm confused. That's Can I be confused, Dave? I yeah, yeah, but I why can't I share? I don't know. Anyway, I am got a couple questions here. If you were, okay, uh, let's go. Let's answer a couple questions. Are the three dots were called an ellip ellipsis? <laughs> yes, ellipsis. Yeah, I know that that's what that's called, but why did anyway? Okay, that's good. Uh, uh, Tom, Tom Wicklin has uh, four quote unquote locations. I have many more locations sure. uh, than you do. Why? Yeah. He has a whole list here. He put in the, in the chat. Like, uh, okay. Uh, so I, so I don't box. have, so I do not have, I can mobile installed. I do not have PDX uh, PDF expert installed. So each of uh, documents is the, uh, okay. All of those are, are different. You have on my iPhone. I have on my iPad. OK, uh, I don't install Google Drive. I don't have it. So I do not have all of those um, file providers is what they're called installed yeah. on my device. So you have a lot more uh, file providers installed. You just you're just very efficient, Tom. You got a lot of stuff. No, no, no. He's got um, spread. He's spread thin. He, or uh, he, he's spread thin. That's a, he's, he's got <laughs> goes across a lot of different apps. So he, he likes to explore. That's why. Yeah. Well, no, but it's um, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then uh, Frank uh, asked, uh, can you change the tags uh, end name? I have no idea. There's some things you hang on. Let me, let me press done over here. Red. Uh, yeah, you can. can you? I guess you can. Yes, you can. There you go. Now, what's what is curious is, does it change it? Does it sync it to iCloud and make it make your red, uh, you know, purple uh, or whatever name you change yeah. it to on your Mac? I would imagine it does, but I haven't done that. But yes, yeah. you can change it. There you go. I only got a couple minutes left here. Yeah. What else do people want to see? Anything else they want to see? iPaddy. Uh, anything more on files? If uh, there, we could go a little further, but we're kind of short on time. So, yep. Any any questions out there? Please uh, put them in the chat or in the Q and A. We'll happy to answer them. Margaret uh, 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 talked about the ellipse a little more. It says, "I think I will call ellipses and the more button because it's a long. It's long been a standard on the Mac that ellipses oh, yeah. is, after a more. menu option means it's a dialog box with more decisions." Yeah, and 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 somebody subsumed that to make the hamburger menu. I guess maybe I don't know. Yeah. Hamburger menus are kind of crazy looking sometimes. Let's see, where's it? See if I can show a hamburger menu. I don't know if anything has got any. Yeah, so this has got all the ellipses on you know on on Microsoft Word here as an example. So yeah, you can open a OneDrive anyway. So that. Any other questions? All right, um, I, uh, we're gonna move on to our next uh, session then. I welcome to bring on uh, Chad Baker and Randy uh, Napolsky. They're uh, gonna talk a little more about the, 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 uh, the SEAU community. Um, let me get them unmuted. And uh, Chad, you are unmuted right now. How are you, Chad? Great, Dave, can you hear me? I can. Great. And uh, uh, Randy, you're unmuted as well? Yes, I, can you hear me? I can. Okay. If you guys uh, want to take it away, do you want to 
do uh, you want to share anything or do you whatever you'd like to do talk about the uh the, the community you want to continue on our conversation from last session yeah I, I, as i said earlier i pretty much finished up what i had to say although i can certainly add more but i thought chad uh, would want to take yeah check him. he didn't get his chance yeah. last uh last time it makes sense yeah, or, chad, uh, why don't you uh, take the lead here and uh do you, do you want to share your screen you can or do you want me to share it i can whatever you'd like yeah, that'd be great, Dave. Um, you know, I'm not, I didn't really set up to share. I mean, if you want to throw the forum up on the screen, that'd be great. If yeah, not, I'll, you just, know, we, yeah I'll do that. We can go from there. We'll do that so everybody can see it and then they can make uh, comments and questions. Give me one okay. second to share it here. You want to go ahead and uh, give us your insights on the community. Okay, I'll start rambling on and let Randy jump in where it makes sense. And if anyone wants to, you know, shoot through any questions, that'd be great. Um, you know, I'll just kind of make a, an initial comment. I'm a heavy forum user. I've used forums in, you know, one way or another for, you know, upwards of 30 years. So, you know, uh, sometimes I'm a troll looking for information. Sometimes I'm a contributor. And, you know, yeah. it, it's different forums provide different levels of community and kind of mm -hmm. rolling into that technical type forums receding back off of Facebook and setting up their own forums. And, and I had mentioned it in the last meeting, I think discourse, the software that, the, that our forum uses is really facilitating that. I mean, it's really a game changer. Uh, there have been other standardized forums before, and they've been clunky and painful and buying apps to make it work and all kinds of stuff. Discourse is, is more or less fixed that. Uh, so I, I think that's that's huge. And what that does as well is if you use our forum, there's a good chance you'll go out and use other forums as well that are using discourse. And once you learn the interface, you can do the same things on all, all the forums. So it's very, very nice. And it's nice in the browser. It's nice in the app. Um, and, you know, and on that note, if you do want to see a, a really good community using discourse, the Max Sparky forums really have kind of set the standard in the Apple world for using discourse. I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. It's a strong, vibrant community, lots of discussions. And I mean, if we were going to attempt to model ourselves after something, I would definitely say that would be wh where you'd want to take a look at. Um, hey, Chad? Yep. What was the name of that again? For those of us who want to explore that, uh, how would I get to that? Uh, so that is, I think it's Max. How would I add that? Yeah. And I'll, we'll let Dave look for it, but I think it's maxsparky.discourse.com. And if you're using the Discourse app, you would just put that address in the, in the actual Discourse app. If you're using a browser, you would log in and you know go through the registration process and discourse. And I'll pull it up real quick here and just let's go to his website. It, yeah, so it's actually talk dot mac power users dot com. Oh, it's the mac is, the mac power users mac one. power users. Yeah, yeah. so that's yeah, mac power users, yeah. which is the podcast. And Mac Sparky's the nickname of the podcast host, and that's kind of yeah, that's where where that comes from. Yeah, it's David Sparks. Yeah. Yeah. There it yeah. Is. And, and that, again, that forum, crazy amount of activity, crazy great content. I mean, it's, you know, it, it's a great place to go for all kinds of different things. And, and it's entertaining as well. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, I mean, and that kind of takes me to my next thought is that, you know, before when Becky had approached Randy and myself to, to talk about this, we all lived in a different world than we live in today. So I think this discussion is now becomes more relevant than than ever before. You know, originally, when I had put some notes together, I really wanted to focus on how important the community like this is as an extension of the physical meetings for a lot of reasons, particularly, you know, one of the things I thought about and was going to talk in depth about was attracting younger members that you need a, you know, a vibrant virtual community to get those younger members engaged and to then get those younger members to come to meetings. And, you know, part of that is, and my, my child's past this age, but, you know, I remember that nine out of 12 months a year, all my Saturdays were booked. So I'd never be able to come to a meeting, but if you can participate in a, a virtual community, and then when you do get to the meetings, you're still part of that community and, and you, you grow from that. So now in our new world, that's all kind of changed because now we're all in a virtual community and for months or, 
you know, I, God forbid, maybe years, we're going to be in some type of virtual community and keeping things alive and going. This is, you know, just a wonderful tool. The timing couldn't be better to have this tool to keep things going. Um, you know, with that, with that said, you know, just kind of touch on some of the things that I use forums for. I mean, the biggest, my biggest forum use is question and answer. I mean, I'm out hunting answers all the time for all kinds of things in forums. And I think, you know, one of the things that our monthly meetings do so well is the Q&A. But as I don't have to tell everyone, when you're at the monthly meeting, time flies at an unbelievable rate. It's just, you know, the, the content is so good that it's just, it disappears and it's over before you know it. And really, I think the forums can be an extension of that Q&A session that you can do the Q&As in the forum and, and start discussions. You can then, you know, when we do get back to physical meetings, it can be an extension after the meeting. It can be questions that can be addressed at the meeting. Just a lot of potential for Q&A stuff. Uh, you know, another thought that always comes to mind on forums or, you know, extending relationships. Again, we have these great meetings, but we eva we have to evacuate the building pretty quickly. You know, it doesn't leave a whole lot of time for, you know, chatting and everything. And I think the forum gives us the ability to extend those discussions on an individual level after, you know, after the meetings are over. And, you know, on that kind of same note, I've noticed a lot of other interests that people in the group have. You have the opportunity to connect with people in the group on other interests. I mean, I've seen ham call signs. I've seen comic books. I've seen knitting, I've classical music. I mean, there's clearly, a you know, we have a, a group with people with a lot of diverse interests. And I think a forum gives you that opportunity to build and extend those relationships as well, and then use the technology potentially to enhance your other interests. So. So I'm just kind of rambling on, but I mean, it's just a, a wonderful no. tool to hey, have. Dad, I've got, I've got a question here. Um, a lot of people might be interested in what you just said there about, you know, for, um, uh, communicating with other people. Um, I assume, and I have not used this software nearly as much as you. I haven't been involved in this world uh, in a long, long time. I mean, uh, so, but, but you mentioned, uh, you know, there's, there's a reply uh, arrow which you can just reply and everybody sort of sees what's going on there but there's also the message uh, message i assume is what you're talking about for individual things or what yeah i, I think you know i mean from a, technically how to do that yeah from a technical standpoint and again i haven't sent any private messages or anything on our form but i know the functionality exists so ah. i think the ability to do that assuming it's it's turned on and engaged exists you know so i think that's kind of a combination is you know, you're publicly discovering a, a co-interest with someone or you want to expand, you know, a relationship beyond that. And I think that's an important point to make, too, is that if there's public benefit to that discussion, unless there's something you really want to, you know, keep private, you, you definitely want to make any information that would be helpful to other people yeah. In, in the public forum. And then yeah, if it is, sure. if it is something more private where you do want to have a, a personal relationship or personal discussion, I think that's where you take it off. And, and I think forums tend to, you know, struggle with that balance sometimes, you know, that a lot of times there's, there's great public information and people take it private and vice versa. Sometimes there's information that really doesn't help the community and it turns mm -hmm. into, you know, a long painful post. <laughs> So, so we can, let's demonstrate, Dave, do you want me to do a demonstration of private messaging real quick, or do you want to do one, or what do you want to do? Yeah, I let's think that would be for those who, um, yeah, sure, go ahead. Uh, just them. let me just, let me just do that real quick, just so you can, you can see, uh, and, and, and show you a little bit how I use discourse, uh, uh, discourse hub. So let me, let me go back to my iPad here. Okay. All right. So now, so I don't use the web browser on the iPad. I use this app called Discourse Hub, which is free. Okay. Um, and notice I have, so ours, I have, uh, I only have four of them in here right now because I'm rebuilding. So, but let's just go over to my SCAU community. And um, uh, here's a, a presentation that Margaret just posted. Now, if, I'm t if I, let me, let me go down here. If I tap on the picture, Margaret's picture here, so you can see, you know, stuff about Margaret, and then you could click on message and I could private, 
I could private message uh, Margaret right there, just like that. So you could click. So you could anybody you can see, you can private message him. So I want to private message Randy. There's Randy. So I can just by tapping on the on the user's icon there, the uh, uh, picture. You can do that. So put your picture on, guys. Uh, looks makes it look better. So that's it. Um, we were we were talking about forums. So I just we mentioned a couple of them. So talked up Mac power users is we talked about tidbits is another one which is really, really good. And so Dave and I reference tidbits a lot. Um, and, and there's a whole bunch of stuff about in tidbits that is really, uh, is, I think is good. Uh, tidbits is good. So, uh, and, and it works the same way, you know, I'm on tidbits and I wanted to message somebody on tidbits. I could do that. Um, and then Bob, I'm yes. gonna, do you need to, uh, our community, we needed an ID and a password to connect to it. Do is that necessary for these other communities? all of the all of them all of them yes absolutely all right yeah so absolutely sure. yeah uh so the i'm going to call it the, the there there's these are sort of self-policing communities uh much less than than some of the um some of the other um uh things out there um and so what happens is is people who don't do dumb stuff uh, they get downvoted and they get knocked back pretty quickly, uh, <laughs> usually, usually. Um, and it, it, so it avoids, it avoids a lot of that. And it's, it's a, not quite, not there, maybe not quite as open, but it works really, uh, really well. So um, there, there are, are more of these that I normally have inside of here, but uh, this iPad just got rebuilt again for n nothing to do with errors. That's do with the way Bob works. Um, so I was testing first time run experience on iPads for somebody. And so I just did it on this iPad. But anyway, so those are, these are the ones I can't do without. Okay. The, uh, th those, those specific ones. So anyway, that's, mm. that's that. So I can stop sharing now. And that's, that app is discourse hub. Do you notice any differences between the app versus the website? Sometimes there are significant differences. I haven't tried the website. I just use the app. Um, I, I most, uh, I use these, I use them interchangeably. Um, uh, I think the app, uh, just seems to do it, to do it well, but it lets me get to all the communities in one spot and kind of, it kind of concentrates. So what I use, what I use uh, an app like this for is to, I want to go study or work in the, in the, in the, in the rune labs community. It's a piece of software. Um, or, uh, the other, the other one that's not on here right now is, um, uh, Devon think Devon think is one that needs to be on here. Cause I use Devon think there's a Devon think community, things like that. So it keeps, uh, I, when I'm targeting it, it's that whole keep, keep the distractions away. There's not anything else going on on the screen, all that just in that one spot. So I just, I use that. Uh, and, and I haven't found anything I can't do on the iPad uh, that I need to do in the community uh, okay. on, with That's that app. Good. Yeah. Uh, at least that, and and maybe it's just because I have a very, uh, I don't say I have an area, uh, I have a concentrated use case. I go in there, I search, I look, I read, I comment, I help, uh, that kind of stuff. So uh, I, I like it a lot. Um, and what I what I'm what I'm trying to do and is to take uh, to take things and concentrate them down into. I go here to do that thing. Okay. And that, you know, reduces the amount of places I'm dancing around on the internet, saves me time. Hmm. Anybody, anything else? I didn't know. No comments. <laughs> no, I'm just looking to see if there's anybody has any questions yeah. or anything. Yeah. Did, uh, Chad, did you have anything else you wanted to talk with this? Uh... Um, you know, I mean, I think just kind of in closing, the thing I would add is that, you know, especially when we're in our, our shelter in place world here and we try to, you know, stay focused and stay sane, you know, 10 minutes a day, take that 10 minutes a day, just especially on, if you have the app on your phone or the iPad, it's just wonderful. Take 10 minutes, scroll it through, see what's going on. And then, you know, the, the other thing I'd add is don't hesitate to post something you discover. You know, in addition, if you have a problem, definitely post it. You know, people will jump in. But if you discover something, you think to yourself, oh, no one's going to be interested in this. You'd be surprised. You know, just go ahead and post it. It's yeah. taking you a minute or two. And you'd be shocked at how many people will not only benefit from it today, but might be searching five years from now and might be like, oh, this is great. So don't ever hesitate to post. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and sure. it, it really, it, it, 
it just to me is a much nicer way of doing things. Uh, a couple of the organizations I use use uh, Yahoo, uh, groups.io, which is nowhere near as rich as this is. And, and, and so, you know, that's another place where you'll find uh, like a lot of the ham radio uh, places or, or you were talking about radio. They use groups.io because it's free. So, yeah, like Karma moved to groups.io and it's horrible. So, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Frank asked a question about uh, what about specific SIGs? I think he's talking about uh, doing SIGs in uh, maybe we have it in the, in the, in the community. Yeah. I, I don't know that we, uh, you know, we in, in the community, we've got the, uh, uh, you know, the subject matter areas. Uh, I think you could consider that almost a SIG on its own. Um, if you wanted to have um, SIG meetings sort of thing, we could do some of that here on uh, on on Zoom on the, on the Zoom webinar with the features. So, you know, Dave, you and I were talking about using the uh, the Zoom. Um, I can't think of the word right now. Uh, breakout rooms. Uh, breakout rooms. So uh, we, we we might try that here coming up. Uh, doing doing breakout sessions and have uh, uh, you know a session of each one each different uh, subject matter for people to do. So they you come here and you can go to a breakout room and discuss you know your favorite hamburger. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> a, a while ago I asked uh, Bob and he set it up a. a, a category called podcast because I thought it would be interesting to hear what people are listening to and um, I put a couple things out there that I just happen to be aware of right at the moment but I don't know if people aren't aware of that and they listen to a lot of podcasts and they think it would be worthwhile for other people to know about it I'd say go out there and post it oh yeah that's a good idea yeah yeah just wanted to let people know there is a category out there for that very purpose you know so please use it well, and and to a certain extent, uh, there's some YouTube channels that are kind of the same sort of thing that are sort of podcasts and, and, and information. There's all kinds of places, but uh, uh, podcasts are, I think, a wonderful uh, you know radio show type methodology. Dave doesn't know anything about podcasts, though. I don't know. Dave just yeah, doesn't know. Nah, know. Nah, he's gonna nah. he's gonna have to learn how to do that. You know? Yeah, you're gonna have to gonna have to learn. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're, especially you're with people becoming podcasts, so you should be you should be, should be managing it, Bob. Oh, I'm sorry. I, mean, with people, I only participate in tax. one. Yeah, well, we only have one. but And the podcast is as much as the YouTube channel, but that's okay. <laughs> so if you want to see weird technology stuff, that's uh, the three techs on YouTube or, uh, or the three techs on uh, podcasts. So you get to listen to me talk, talk more. All right. So let's uh, let's go ahead and we're going to bring you guys off here. Appreciate it. Chad and Randy did a great job uh, talking about the, uh, uh, the, uh, the group, Thanks, guys. Uh, the community. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. And then uh, let me, let me un unmute George. George, uh, you are going to give us some tips. Hello, uh, everybody. Hey, George. Hey, George. How are you doing? Can you guys hear me fine? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, uh, hey, we're at a new normal, I guess. Uh, it's one way of calling it. And it's things are interesting, I can say. Um, now that we're all shelter in place and staying at home, there's a few things let's talk about. Okay. Uh, by the way, you guys were mentioning earlier about the Mac Power users. As you can see, I have on my Mac yeah. Power users uh, World 2017 T-shirt. Oh, I'm jealous. I got this from. Yeah, uh, I got this I actually from Parks. that. Parks. So, uh, but uh, going back to talking about different things, of course, during this time, there are, let's talk about what's up. Uh, you know, I always talk about the little deals and things. Well, I found something that's very interesting. You know how you go to the store and there's nothing there on the shelves? So uh, I noticed something. A lot of the stores don't have enough people to put the stuff up on the shelves, but you'll see containers and boxes around open the boxes up nine times out of 10, what you're looking for is in there. I just so happens to went to Walgreens and I saw the truck there and I'm like, but why are the shelves empty? But I saw the containers. Well, lo and behold, look what I found in the container. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, when you open the container up, you find stuff. <laughs> so 
Open the containers up. <laughs> now, uh, I don't understand why they don't actually put the containers in the rows of where the stuff is. So it might be in a different uh, different aisle, because I did notice that, because I found those things over by the cards, believe it or not. So if they put the stuff over in the aisles where it's supposed to go up, people would just open up the boxes and containers and get the stuff out that they need. Um, Another thing, let's talk about this. Uh, oh, by the way, in case you guys didn't notice, uh, you see what I've done during this time. I decided to not shave. On that beard. So, uh, so that's a uh, you know find something different to do during this time. You know, like I've done, I've grown a beard, but also there's different things you do. Like, uh, okay, remember all those things you were putting off that honeydew list? Uh, now's a good time to actually knock it down. You sheltering in place. Uh, okay, because I'm sure that uh, Ed has a nice long list from Becky. So, uh, so Ed, I'm sorry, you'll have to knock it out now. You have no excuse, right? Another thing that I found out when you're ordering online from like Costco, because of course nobody's going to the store. You want to actually let other people bring the stuff to you. Have your shipping time or delivery time earlier in the day because the shelves are actually more full. Think about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm doing that on Instacart. Right, when you go on Instacart. Because I'm telling you, I went to Costco, uh, and I normally go to Costco in the suburbs. And I went to the one in the city. When I saw seven police cars and the line going down the, the length of the store, that's when I went home and did my online order. I was like, uh-uh. Yeah. Yep. So, but like I said, if you actually do it for the early part of the day, you're more apt to get everything. But also be aware if you do an online order, you want to be uh, available because the shopper may actually be uh, wanting to do substitutions and you're going to have to be able to respond to the text that they're going to send. Okay. But some other things, now is a good time to back up your computer. You got time to do it, right? Yeah, you do. Come on now. So all those things like backing up your computer, backing up your iPhone, that's a good time to do that, you know? So, okay. Uh, also, now's a good time, go through your contact list. Those people that you haven't actually talked to in a while, how about picking one person per day to actually call or better yet, don't call them, FaceTime them. How about that? Go through and FaceTime, Zoom and talk to people that you haven't talked to in a while. It's a good thing to do. Now, I will tell you guys, this is my first time. I'm, you know, I'm used to an audience and you guys, and we interact back and forth. And I'm like, this is new for me to actually just sit and just talk. <laughs> and it's like, okay, I was like, wow. Uh, this is, like I said, our new normal. It's not something I that- could, I could jump up and down and wave and, and pretend to be, and, and, you know. <laughs> yeah, I could too. <laughs> oh, see, see, I have- Oh, George. Over on the side <laughs> but, uh, but don't forget, there's all these things that you can get into that you used to do. Because I was sitting up there the other day and I was talking to one of my friends and he said to him and his uh, granddaughter, we're going to go out and uh, to the park and blow bubbles. And I was like, hmm. Maybe I think I'll go out. So I'm going to go and get me some bubbles and go out and blow them. Because it's like one of those things you haven't done in like probably 30, 40 years, unless you got grandkids. So, you know, it's kind of one of those things that break up, do something to break up the this time that we have. Don't just plop in front of the television, because I will tell you, I think I'm almost done watching every episode. I've ha I have watched every episode of I Love Lucy. <laughs> now I'm almost finished with Here's Lucy and the Lucy Show. <laughs> I think I've completed all of the Lucy Show. I think I have a few more episodes of Here's Lucy to watch. So you guys don't, don't want to do this, but okay, I'm going to give you a deal because you know about deals. And I was shocked at this. You can get all of the Game of Thrones. It's on sale now. The whole kit and caboodle for 99 bucks. And I was like, I'm not a Game of Thrones fan, but I know a good deal when I see one. And that's a good deal. But remember, you might want to buy a scale during this time, too, because I think I, I, I've started to have to watch what I'm eating. Don't buy any junk food, because this is not the time to be buying any junk food. Buy all the healthy stuff, okay? Because we're in our new normal. 
and we have to find ways to not come out of this on the on the bad side, but come out of this on a good side. So add extra things in uh, to your life. Uh, you might want to actually use YouTube. YouTube is a good thing to use because you can go in there and find all kinds of music, uh, healthy, uh, healthy cooking, healthy, uh, all kinds of good healthy things to do. By the way, if you don't have a face mask, uh, there's uh, things on YouTube about how to make one. I didn't make one. I actually bought this one. You know? So, but uh, every, of course, everybody has to have their face mask. So, but uh, puzzles. The when's the last time you guys did a jigsaw puzzle? Two days ago. Two days ago, okay. There are now, of course, there, there are the physical jigsaw puzzles and there are electronic jigsaw puzzles. Uh, so there's a good thing that you can blow huge amounts of time doing that. Uh, also, don't forget, like I said, YouTube, you click on one thing and next thing you know, five hours has gone by. Now, remember, you might want to set some timers, uh, you know, have a good schedule. And remember, back up. And we're talking about backing up your computer, backing up your phone. iAmazing is a great, uh, great app to actually use to back up your iOS devices. By the way, now's a good time to catch up on a podcast I heard about. Hmm, what's that? In Touch iOS? You can go through and, and, and you know, start from episode one and come on up. <laughs> so that was a good time to be doing 95 of them. See, 95. There you go. And of course, you can go out and do your exercise. So there you can walk to in touch with iOS with Dave in your ear. <laughs> Remember, you can't I, I, I can't picture that. I'm sorry. I sorry. I just can't yeah. picture that. Dave in my yeah, ear. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Thing. So yeah. but, but you want to watch what you're actually consuming during this time. You want to consume positive things that are going to uplift you and also educate you. So don't just sit and always watching the news. OK, because there's a lot of that. Uh, another thing is that, that there are online, so believe it or not, the marketing companies are still doing survey and marketing research things. So there are online um, marketing research studies that you can do. Um, don't forget that you can also still, uh, I know a lot of people probably are used to volunteering. There is still volunteering that you can do from your house. One of the things you can do there, and I'll post this in the community, you could actually volunteer to be the eyes for visually impaired individuals. They'll actually contact you using an app on your, on your iPhone and they'll ask you, what is this? And then you actually describe what it is to the individual. Very great service, very great service. I definitely, uh, cause we all have time on our hands now, except for me. Cause um, I will say this, I'm working from home and I'm working harder and longer now. I was like, I cannot wait till I can go back into the office, y'all. <laughs> I've never thought I'd say that. Oh, don't forget, repot some plants. See, I got plants back here. Uh, one of them actually needs to be repotted. So, but um, uh, clean, clean, clean. You got plenty of time now. So, uh, any pro uh, projects? Oh, now, now let's think about that. You want to watch the projects that you're doing. So, um, are there any questions in the chat or anything? Uh, there's a backup question, which I was going to, I was going to do some answer of that when you got done. So oh, uh, do a quick, do a quick, no, no, I'm going to take over screen stuff. So just see if there's anybody else. Uh, yeah, we have news a, fasting. That, yes. <laughs> you said fasting. No, somebody said news <laughs> fasting. Yes. Take, oh, fast yeah, from yeah, your news. Like news fasting. News yeah. fasting. Yes. Yeah, news fasting. Yes. 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 30 minutes of news a day. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, somebody, um, we're, we're going to see how, uh, check in with me another time. We'll see how good I'm doing with this. When I was at church, I always talk about everybody drinking Pepsi because I'm always sitting there drinking water. Well, one of my church members actually said something to me. I was walking to Target uh, to get something and I was sitting up there telling him, I was like, ooh, you know, all the Easter candies on sale. And I was like, oh, I can go get me a chocolate bunny. He's like, hmm. So you just so hooked to chocolate, huh? Like you talk about us being hooked to that Pepsi. So I'm going to see about weaning myself off of chocolate a little bit during this time. So pick something that you need to change in your life because we have all this time now. So, and they say it takes 30 days to create a habit. So why not actually take this 30 days to create a good habit like backing up, 
or giving up something. You know. And I'll be, uh, turn it over to Bob now so he can talk about the backing up. Oh, I get to talk about backing up. Okay, that'd be cool. If we, do we, Dave? Do we have time? Well, yeah, we have about uh, we got about five minutes. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'm going to do. A, I'll do a. I'll do a. Um, I'm I'm fixing something here, so let me fix this so that I can make all this work, and then and we'll do that. So George, if you don't, I'm going to see this if this works. Okay, I can't do this. Uh, I'll have to fix that later. So let's talk about backups. Okay. Let's talk about free. Let's talk about paid. Let's talk about backups. And I will show you Bob's backup methodology. So here we go. Let me close a few applications. Let me do a quick screen share. Uh, let's share my screen. Let's share my desktop. Come on. Share button, Bob. Uh, any great de deals? There's no deals out there. Um, I don't know. There's probably lots of deals out. So sharing your share, share your, uh, your backups. So the question was, uh, backups, uh, and, and the very first one, the very first one is time machine, stick an external drive. Someone was talking about, you want to upgrade their Mac and I forgot who it went by. It went by quickly. Um, anyway, uh, time machine comes with every Mac. Get yourself an extra, get yourself an external drive, back it up. It's this, this Mac is in the process of doing uh, a cleanup of, of the backup to the external drive right at this very moment. So it's just, it just finished. Okay. Um, there, notice that this uh, only goes back to uh, the February 26th because this operating system was, uh, this machine was re-imaged on February 20th, you know, or early in February. So it, that's why it, uh, the backup only goes that far back. Um, the other thing I use, which is a program, and there are others, I use a program called Carbon Copy Cloner that costs money, okay? And what I do with Carbon Copy Cloner, which I could, I'm not gonna demonstrate right now, is I have an external drive, and that external drive, when you plug it in, it has, it, it says, it sees this drive. When that drive gets plugged in, it automatically backs up that drive and then dismounts it. Okay. So it's just boom, done. Uh, so that's another one. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a couple of others uh, that work pretty well. So Carbon Copy Cloner is the one I'm currently using. And those that's are, how I do backups. Are, those are two good choices. I use them as, I use both of those as well. So uh, that, that is great stuff. All right, let's uh, go ahead and wrap it up. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed this uh, session uh, this time around. We're gonna we're gonna meet again in uh, in two weeks and have some more topics, as well as uh, gonna have the iPhone SIG coming up uh, pretty soon here as well. So we'll, you'll uh, stay on the lookout in emails. If you have any trouble uh, getting into the community, please make sure you let us know because we want to make sure that you have uh, access to that. Um, as uh, well as send any emails relating to if you're not getting uh, emails from us or or any communication, we'd really appreciate it. Uh, thanks everybody for being here and uh, have a great day. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye all.